Welcome yeah. to the Law of Attraction Secrets Podcast. I'm your host, Natasha Graziano. Today on the show, we have country artists, new country artists who I'm obsessed with. The music is amazing. I got the pleasure of dancing to it personally on a recent show, and here he is, Zay Wilson. Thank you. How are you? you? I appreciate it. I'm good. How are you? I'm amazing. I love... Uh, I love just rolling with the cameras and us kind of jamming back and forth because always the gems come out, I feel, right before the show. And I'm like, why did we not get that on camera? So yeah. now we just roll. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> I think we learn that, uh, learn that, like, just doing TV. Like, oh, be quiet. We need that. We need to camera. Yes, totally. Yeah. I mean, you actually started in reality TV, mm -hmm. right? But it's interesting because you were one of the few to actually break out and do something really amazing. Like, your music is so interesting. What really captivates me is this new wave of country, mm -hmm. right? And it's like these cool artists who have country tones. Did you always sing country or is it something that you got into? Um, I got into country music when I was like, probably like early middle school. Um, like I grew up like with hip hop culture. You yeah. know, I grew up around hip hop culture in the hood, St. Louis, Missouri, like, you know, one of the worst cities, you know, in America. but. I just felt like I always wanted to get, be better, you know? You know, I think, like, me growing up, both of my parents was, you know, on drugs and... I want to go there for a minute. Tell really, us more about you know, that. On drugs. Well, yeah, both of my parents was on drugs growing up and stuff and on hard drugs. So even now, it's just like, you know, you hear rap songs like, oh, I'm serving to the fiends. I'm like... Dang, you serving to my you serving to my parents, you know, like yeah. you know, not literally, but you know, you know, just talking talking about that stuff and how you know me and my my sisters and we didn't have food and you know electric off, water off and stuff like that. So I've always wanted to, you know, talk about positive things and just talk about you know things that's just like you know I don't know just more valuable to the to the ear and to the mind. That's beautiful. When you were growing up, do you remember like those times when you were saying you had no food, you had no electric? Like, were you young? Like, how did that? I don't want to like trigger it, but like, no, yeah, how did it? How did it feel like not yeah. having food and stuff? Like, did you know you were a child who was growing up in that kind of like? Yeah, state? we we grew up very fast, you know, because my parents were leaving. Me and my, you know, I grew. I'm a baby of seven, but. Wow. Uh, but uh, four of my siblings got taken away before I was even born. So, and I'm, you, you know, I'm the baby. So, uh, two of my older sisters, like, we just, we, we was w all we had. Like, we got up and dressed ourselves for school. Like, we, you know, had to, we was out. Like, it's crazy enough to say, but elementary school was out until like one o'clock, 12, 12 o'clock in the morning, doing whatever we wanted to do, you know, just being little hood rat kids. Cause when we went home, it wasn't parents there. We just go in whenever we, and it's crazy to think about that now. Like to think about a kid in elementary school just out doing whatever the fuck they wanted to do is is insane. But that was, you know, that was our life, and we understood what was going on. Both of our parents was, you know, on crack, like <laughs> was crackheads. It's like we knew what was going on. We knew like we go to school and get teased because our classmates, their parents was the drug dealers that was selling to our parents. And you know, it's just like, oh yeah, we seen your mom come come over to the house last night and stuff like that. So we knew what was what was going on. Like it was so much, it was so much going on. We had, uh, I remember one time it was, uh, I guess my dad had owed uh, the drug dealer some money or whatever. And some dude came and knocked on the door with, with like 10 people at our door. Like, you know, <laughs> where's, your, where's your dad at? My God. And you know what I'm saying? And my dad is running through the back and literally did the craziest thing. Sent my mom outside with all these guys. I'm like, you know, and that's just, you know, that's just another story for another day. But it's just like, that made me like, like, dang, this is crazy. This is real. And like, life hits you fast and you got to grow up. It's no like time to feel sad about your, your life or feel down you have to always get to the next point and and it was hard for me to get out of that state it only it man it took me to take to like I was like 25 26 to get out of that that mentality of okay bet on to the next point yeah. and actually sit there and be able to deal with 
my feelings and be able to cry and be able to feel feel those. You know what I'm saying? So yeah, it's for like, sure. Have you dealt with them now? Do you feel like, and what did you do, like, to overcome? Like, what did you do to actually overcome those intense emotions to make sure that you, you know, because what I see you now, it doesn't feel like you carry them with you. It feels like you've released the past. What did you do to overcome all of that? Um, just under, just honestly, just understanding the situation, even uh, just on my everyday life, I see something. And it reminds me of my childhood, and I can say, "Oh, this is why." You know, I was I was a really bad kid growing up. You know, I was really bad. I was the kid that I was that kid in your class that's always getting suspended, mm -hmm. always getting in trouble. But it's not surprising, like how yeah. you know you didn't have the parenting and discipline behind you. Yeah, and and I'm like, like, and they didn't understand it at the school either, but they didn't also understand what was going on at home, mm -hmm. like. They knew I was smart. A, I was always A on a row, but I would be getting suspended on the first day of school type shit. Like, I, I was bad. I was so bad. But now, like, I look back at it, I was like, oh, I wasn't getting attention at home. Like, mm -hmm. I wasn't getting it's love at home. I wasn't exactly. And now I know that. But back then, I didn't know. I was just like, whatever. Wow, so so interesting, like, listening to people's stories of, like, where they came from to where you are now. So if you were talking to your younger self, what would you tell them? Um, you know what? I don't know. I, I just, I don't know. That's, that's, that's hard to say. Uh, because one of my favorite sayings is like, be who you needed when you were younger. But honestly, I don't regret anything that I've been through, anything that I saw in my life because it made me who I am today. I don't I don't know if I could be that same person if I didn't go through all this stuff. Yeah. So. So, well, I know that for sure. Like, I look at my life and I'm like, I went through the craziest times later on. So I found myself, like, in so much debt. It was, it was terrible. I was overcoming an illness. I was a single mom. Everything in my life was rock bottom. And I was also overcoming the whole party well with drugs, like a real problem. Mm -hmm. So I was like, shit, how do I get out of here? But it was from that place of rock bottom that the Natasha Graziano that you see today was born. It was from that place that I was able to birth this new woman and birth a different version of me. I didn't want to be in the sex industry anymore. I didn't want to be this person that I was online. I wanted to change and become something greater. And I believe at any point in somebody's life, mm -hmm. they can flip the script, they can turn the page and start again. Today, right now, right now, right now, right now, at any point in your life. Like when you decided, I'm gonna be a country artist. Mm -hmm. Like that's what I'm gonna do. I'm gonna go on and I'm gonna sing and I'm gonna inspire people and exactly. I'm gonna be, so we can do that at any point in our life. And like nothing stops us apart from ourselves. So, you know, even though I had an illness and I was bed bound for quite a bit of it, it was terrible. I still decided, no, I'm going to get out of this. I'm going to get out of bed. I'm going to walk today. I'm going to be good. I'm going to be strong. This illness is not going to attack my body anymore. And I'm going to change lives. Like, I know my calling. I can feel it in my soul. Everybody has a calling. Like, you know that mm -hmm. and still know that inside of you, your calling was to sing. You knew, like, I've got to do this. Like, I've got to do this. So God or the universe puts us through the crazy challenges that we've been through. Everything we've been through, like the illness for me, the debt for me, the single momhood for me, like everything 10 times was so heavy. Why? Because that is the reason that I'm able to be who I am today, to share with the world. The fact that I went through such a chaotic time, the fact that I was so low has enabled me to stand up here and inspire tens of thousands of people on stage, mm. to go and speak in these huge arenas and be like, Here's my word. Here's my my voice for you. Here's the things that I want to share with you. No religion attack, nothing attached. Just here's some words of wisdom that will help guide you. Why I was able to write my books. Because if I had a silver spoon life and everything was so easy, people would be going, what the fuck have you been through? Yeah. Right? So it's like, I kind of feel like singers have been through crazy stuff. I don't know why, but I do know why if I actually look at it because... You have to have a story to tell. Yeah. You sing about it in your music. <laughs> like, if everything was so easy and, you know, you got signed off the rip, everything was really easy and you just were always, like, living a beautiful life, like, where's your, where's your core? Like, you had to go through that because you're a star. Stars go through these crazy scenarios. People who are meant to be in the public eye go through these crazy times, right? Mm -hmm. So you're just one of those people. Yeah, and it's, I, think, I think growing up a lot, I was... Super like 
you know, I didn't, I, I wasn't telling everybody. Like now, I'm like, I don't mind. Like, oh yeah, both of my parents were crackheads. Like, I grew up poor. Like, going to school, hoes in my shoes, dirty, getting talked about, getting in fights because people were talking about me. You know what I'm saying? Like st stuff, all, all that, that, that stuff right there. I wouldn't. I could. I could never take back. I could. I could never like say. No. Oh, I wish I had this, yeah. because you know if you look at it, a lot of people that are, grew like that, that have grown up with silver spoons and everything handed. They don't know how to handle conflict. Mm -mm. You don't know how to handle, like adversity. You don't know how to, you know, make something out of nothing. They don't. They don't know how because everything has been handed, and I just. And that's why that's the most important, you know, I feel like the most important part of me is going through that stuff and be now I can say, hey, you can be this. I've gone through the same thing. I've been through similar situations. Mm -hmm. But if you but if you don't, if you haven't, then you can't you can't say that you can't inspire somebody. Imagine if they're they looking at me here. I'm on TV. I'm on stage singing and like I look, look at me. I'm going home and going to to a refrigerator with no food. How can I do that? That person ain't done it. But I, if I say, yeah, I've, I've done this. When I was in high school, I slept in cars. I was homeless. I slept on porches. I slept on floors. I slept on so many people's couches. Like, I've done all I, I've done all these things and look at me now. That's incredible. You are homeless too? Yeah. Wow, this is such a crazy, amazing story. So many people who have been fully homeless like that have turned out to be the most amazing people. What was it inside of your soul that went, like, I want to do something great with my life? Because you haven't just gone from, like, homeless to normal, right? Yeah. You're on this show. Like, this is the top five shows in America for education. Like, mm. you're alongside some of the biggest stars. Like, not saying that's your only achievement. You've yeah. done so many things. But, like, what made you know, like, I want to do something greater? Because I know what mine was, mm. but I want to hear yours. What was your calling to go, I want to do something bigger? Um... Uh, one of the things was uh, crazy. In high school, um, I was homeless. I was like couch to couch, sleeping on my friends and sleeping on my friends' couches. And, you know, like I said, I was slept in an abandoned car and stuff. But I was playing sports. I was good at basketball. I was good at football. Like, that was something that I was just always good at. I'm, you know, super tall. Like, I'm just <laughs> athletic. I've just been good you at You definitely stuff. look like an NBA player. But I know you were a singer. I'd be like, yo, he's definitely an NBA player. I love that. Yeah. But, but I have it, NBA players on here. It's so funny because they like, the tight difference is yeah. so funny with me and them. But it, you go on. It's just like, I'm, yeah, I'm like, yeah, I'm still doing that. Um, but at the same time, I'm struggling at home. I'm the best player. I'm the best player on the team, but I'm, you know, got to, you know, find something to eat every day and, you know, figure out, okay, I got to wake up in the morning and go take a shower in the locker room and, and stuff like that. Um, but I forgot where I was going. The how, how you need to, like, become but, Oh, yeah, but I feel like, um, like, going through that, I was just going to school every day and it happened to be, like, a spirit week. And, you know, you know spirit week is everybody's, I don't know, everybody's in high school, they have different things throughout the day. But anyways, long story short, I was in um, like the courtyard area and just chilling. It was lunchtime. I was just chilling, talking to some friends. And like, I just seen somebody like, I'm seeing somebody, I'm thinking I'm seeing what I'm seeing. I'm like, am I actually seeing this? And the guy has a, it's a kid, he has a gun, you know? And he actually, you know, like, you know, ended his life right there. And at school. At, at school, and it was just, and I was a, one of a few people that, that you know, that seen that, and... Um, Holy shit, that's fucking terrible. But and he was, you know, I was a senior at the time, he was like a junior. I, I, would, I, I didn't really know him, but my friends knew him, and I used to always see him, but um, what I was getting at is, you know, when I went to the, you know, the FBI had pulled me to the office because I was like, you know, a witness and I was sitting in the office and stuff for a little while and his parents came through crying, you know, so crazy. And um, he just, he, he had just had a baby 
and his baby mom, you know, they're kids, but his baby mom was like, oh, you're not, you're not seeing your kid. His parents had kicked him out. He felt like there was no other option. No one loves me. I can't even see my baby. My parents had kicked me out. They said, you're not going to be anything. And, that, and this was all, he, he wrote this, he wrote this statement on, you know, on Facebook in right class. Before. Yeah, in class, right before. And I'm just like, I'm like, wow. I've been through similar situations. I could have... Done the same. I could have done the same. I could have felt the same way. That's crazy. I had... And, that, and, and at that point, I figured, yeah, I'm playing basketball, but I don't think I'm going to go to college. At the time, like I said, I'm going to school, but I'm not making good grades at the time because it's like, I'm, I'm... I didn't have my two sisters like, well... Okay, we're gonna help. I, it was just me, so I'm like, I'm thinking in my, to myself, like, I have to, I have to get out of this situation. What I'm gonna do? Am I gonna be uh, crackheads like my parents? Am I gonna do that? I don't even, you know, know my grandparents. I don't, only only family I know is is growing up. Who? What am I gonna do? I'm like, I have to try to be the best me. What is the best option? Basketball. And at the time, I'm like, I don't have good grades. I'm like, I don't know how I'm gonna get to college. I have to pass pass these tests, or I'm gonna have to, you know, just try to graduate and go to junior college. And that's, you know, that's what I did. And you know, and just a change of scenery just did so much to me. My freshman year in college, I, you know, was dean's list, and and I was just like, oh, this how what it feels like to be able to like wake up every day and know you have, you know, you can go to the cafeteria and get food and know you have a place to stay and know you wow. th know that you're safe. And from there, like, I just wanted to be the best me. And, and I truly feel like God gives everyone gifts and what you do with that gift is your gift back to him. That's mm -hmm. why I never, I never second guessed on doing something that I was good at. The, the time a year, a year and a half ago, someone said I can sing. I said, okay, let's, uh, let's go in the studio. I never knew I could sing my whole life, but that person said, you can actually sing, you can actually do this. Okay, I can sing, okay, let's go in the studio. So, and I went from there. Wow, what a story. It's so powerful. It's so inspirational, actually, because I was just watching, like, Kurt Cobain's, um, some of his music, Smells Like Teen Spirit, and that was explaining mm. how, if you listen to the lyrics, it's all about how hard it is for teens during that time in their life. And, yeah, you're right, and the fact that you came through it and you didn't go down that path that you saw your friend go through, and that you decided to be something greater, that you decided to go on and be the singer and just what you know it's so exciting it's like what's he gonna do next where's mm -hmm. he gonna go and i hope you become one of the biggest country artists in the world in fact for anyone that wants to know i'm gonna put the link below to zay's music it's so amazing he just Thank dropped you. his new single so you're able to click the link below and listen to it you're gonna love it but yeah this is what's really inspirational so what do you write about in your music like is it where do you get the inspiration from you write i guess yeah i do um it's i think in it helps me so much that I have gone through all these things because yeah. now I can talk about it. Now I can, you know, I made a song that I can make it anywhere. And it's like, you know, I literally can do everything. I can do anything I put my mind, mind to. Any place you drop me, I'm going to make it, you know? I always say to people, drop me in a jungle and I'll walk out in a suit. Yeah. Like, it doesn't walk matter out in the yet. Meat. <laughs> yeah, it doesn't matter where I am. I will come out. Yeah. Like, I will come out good. And that's and then like so all of my music I just I try to pull from things that I've gone through in my life and things that I've also seen seen around me. Uh, my my first song, Slow Game, is just talking about taking it slow and is I feel like we all been in situations where we met a person and just like you know was going too fast and they like oh <laughs> this guy is moving a little too fast for me <laughs> and it's like it 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 makes it so much better moving slow and learning everything about a, a person before you go jump into a situation like you know i was literally on on tv about to get married you know two years ago now i can't even see myself getting married right now like i was just like okay career 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 Wow, we well, were young, so I mean, you have like you know the world ahead of you. But at mm -hmm. that point, age is just a number. If yeah. you meet the right one, you're gonna do a it. But oh my god, this is nuts! So you went on the ultimatum. Mm -hmm. You went on perfect match. Perfect match. All the love shows. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Did you do good on it? Um, 
Yeah, so my first the, my first show though, Tomato, it was just a crazy situation. You know, you go go in that situation with your significant other. Oh. Because one person is ready for marriage and the other person isn't. So you weren't ready and she was. Exactly. Yeah, it's usually the way. So, but the thing was, like halfway through the experience, I was like, well, if I do love this girl, and I can't see myself with with anyone else. Why not get married? You know, because it's like, what am I waiting for? Um, so, like, then I was ready. I was like, babe, I'm ready. And then she was like, mm, I actually don't know if I'm ready. Whoa. And then, yeah, then that whole situation. But I ended up leaving the show single, and my life hasn't, couldn't, hasn't. Uh, it's got better sense. Yeah, I mean, I couldn't look back and say like, "Oh my God." Yeah, I, of course. Because in that situation, you're like, I don't, I don't know what my life looks like without this person. You know, I did. You know, I'm like, I never knew like this the man that I could be. Like, wow. Right now, like now, I'm like, I didn't, I didn't think that I could be be this successful. You know, I, I didn't know I could go and jump on stage and go sing in front of however many people, and you know, and it's hard. That's it makes you like really vulnerable, like you know, writing songs and even putting the songs out. Let alone go and sing, sing the song. So, I mean, my life is great. I can, I could never complain. Like I woke up, I'm breathing. Like I'm, I can't, I'm blessed. I can't ever complain about anything. But you know, all those situations make, make the man. Mm, I love woman. that. Okay, <laughs> give me, give me your morning ritual. Like, do you have anything? Do you, are you into the law of attraction? Do you do things that help you elevate to become a better person? What do you do in your day that helps you evolve? I'm, my my thing is to to talk to people. I, I like to talk to people and make sure my people are are good. And how are you doing? Like, how are you actually doing? Yeah, that's a really great question. Like, I always how are you people, actually how doing? Are you, actually doing is very different mm -hmm. from how are you yeah i think my i mean my mission statement in life is to to help people and i just want to be a be a good person like i just want to be a, a great person to people i want to because i have so much knowledge and so much wisdom i feel like why not help somebody you know i my i think that makes me feel so much better helping you succeed help helping you be a better person mm, that's so beautiful I definitely build a lot of my friendships based on, like, me checking in on them, you know, making sure mm -hmm. they're okay. And then making sure and then they do it back, which is beautiful. But it's like, yeah. are you actually okay right now? Like, how's your mental health? How are you doing? Like, how are you in the world right now? You know? And I think that's so important with any friendship and relationship. Just to check in and be like, what's going on? Because yeah. we're so busy and we're like in this world and everybody's schedules are crazy in their own way and everybody mm -hmm. has their kids or their family or their job or whatever it is that they're doing that takes them to like super busy places but it's like we'll check in on somebody that you care about mm -hmm. you know and be like how are you actually doing because well, it's such a it's such a light question but it's so heavy when you ask someone how are you so whenever I ask somebody how they are unless it's an acquaintance really I'm actually asking how are you and mm -hmm. I will really like highlight it in a message like are you actually okay a lot of the time they'll call me. They'll be like, how did you know? Like, I'll send inspirational messages to people. I mean, my Instagram is just one big page of inspiration, but mm -hmm. I do that for my friends too. You know, I'll be like, send them a little thing. Like, I really care for you. Are you okay? Is everything going well? Like, girl or guy, whoever you are, like, making sure that they're okay. That's really important. And, and then you have to dig in, because a lot of people just don't. Like, you know, especially with guys, a lot of guys, me, I'm open book. Like, I'll be like, him, this is going on and this is going on. But a lot of guys don't want to actually talk about their feelings. And I, you know, I understand it. But then you have to dive in like, okay, how's work? How's this girl that you, you, you like? Or how's this? How's your parents? How's, you know, how, you have to ask those questions and then you can actually get something out of, you know, out of, out of somebody because a lot of people don't want to talk about their feelings and talk about their business and stuff like that because, they don't feel vulnerable enough to to do that but and that's why I surround I try to surround myself around you know just friends that that is going to give me the same the same energy like I don't you know I, I could care less about how many followers you have or how much money you have or you know any of that stuff like what what can you what can you do for me as as a friend mm -hmm. as a as a person how do you help my mental do you help my mental you know I what kind it. of person are you? 
to other people. You know what I'm saying? It's I love like, that. Are you adding value? This is what I always say. Exactly. People, you're an average of the five people you spend time with. So if you are spending time with people who are low lives, aren't doing anything with their world, don't speak nicely about other people, like a low place, guess what? You're literally going to become like them. When you are around people who make you feel inspired, who are elevating you, mm -hmm. you will elevate them, they elevate you, you just go on and you raise your average. So you were playing here, but now you're surrounding yourself with five people who feel good, mm -hmm. your average raises. Every time you leave their company, you feel elevated. Every time you leave somebody's company, they should feel elevated. Yeah. So it's like, what are you pouring in? I love that. Like, what what value are you giving me? And that's the truth. The money, the rest of it doesn't matter. It's how ambitious are you? Because I'm ambitious. So it doesn't matter about, you know, what you're earning. How ambitious are you? How much do you love what you do? Are you sitting complaining every day about how much you hate your 9-5? You know? Those yeah. people I don't have time for. I was sitting yesterday with a girlfriend of mine on the beach, and she was saying... Yeah, I've really disconnected from this one friend in the in her friendship circle because she's she's she complains a lot. She talks and I, I just went blur and said, Is it this person? She how do you know? I said, Well, I'm psychic. Like I, mm. I really am psychic. Like I really I can tune into a lot of things. But I knew, okay, that you know, that's not good for you. No matter who the person is, it's not good for you to be around people that complain. Because guess what? You'll go home and you'll start complaining. Yeah. And it's intoxicating and it's contagious. So we have to surround ourselves with people that make us feel good. Like, when I make people do an assessment of their five friends, I do this with my students, I'm like, okay, take your five friends, your five best friends. So, now take the five qualities you want in a friend. Well, I want loving, loyal, ambitious, kind, and compassionate, right? Mm -hmm. Let's say those are my five top things. So now I go and mark my friends, each of the five friends. This is in my book, in my Be It To You Become It book. You have this whole like chart you can do. So I mark the friends out of these attributes. How loving are you? How kind are you? How ambitious are you? How all of these things are you? Anybody that is under a four out of five, there's an issue. My friends should be a four to a five out of five on everything that I require in a friend in order to be in my company. Otherwise, I will become the three out of five that they are. Yeah. And my average will lower because of them. So that's why when you see people who are like, I had to cut people out and I had to do it again. I've mm -hmm. done it like 10 times in my life. I've moved country, I've changed friendship circles because I will only keep around with the people that are elevating me. Yeah, I think, and it's just like, you don't have to be like them, but you're not growing. Mm-mm. You, you don't have to be, be like your friends if they're doing this, but it's just like, you need people that's gonna pour into who you are trying to be. Yes, 100% who are behind yeah. you going, oh my God, I love your music, I wanna support you, like mm -hmm. I wanna be there for you, like this, like being there with, with your friend, being like, I believe in you, like I've seen you, I wanna like help you, I wanna guide you, I wanna like, you know, be there. It's so true, you wanna be around people that are your cheerleaders, mm -hmm. yeah, and not yes men cheerleaders is yeah. different. Yeah, and it don't matter and, it, and and I think a lot of people these these days is just like oh I just want to hang around popping people I don't care what yeah. you have but what are you doing with your life? Yes. Do you have nothing and you're busting your ass every day trying to become this model, trying to become an entrepreneur like are you doing that? You can be my friend but it's some people that's like oh well if you're not popping I don't want to hang out with you. I don't care what type of bad person you are but you got followers, you got money, I will be your friend. And that's, you know, that's the people I stay, stay away from. And I, it's like, I don't, and I hate people that complain about other people too. Mm -mm. Oh, this friend did this. Well, you so don't want to keep on being our friend. Right, why are like, you still in their life? <laughs> exactly. Like, why are you still, why are you still talking to this person? What does this person do? And people don't understand that. And I'm like, I cut people off. I don't care. You do, <laughs> you do. And I do, it's just like, even I, I had this speech with uh, with some people because um, they like, oh, well, I just want to, you know, I'm a this person. I'm like, why are you letting this person drink and drive? You know what I'm saying? Like, why are you drinking and driving? Mm -hmm. It's just insane. Like, you don't care about your life or the other people that's on the road. You know what I'm saying? It's just like cut people off for that, like stuff like I, that. It's I like, couldn't agree more with that. Like, like there's certain things like morals. It's, it's so beautiful that you have really, like, good morals behind the things that you do. Because I hope that this stays with you. So when you blow up here, mm -hmm. that you still have your humbleness and your morals about you. Because so many people lose that to the fame. They lose that in the game. Like, I'm known for my humility. I'm known for the humble nature that I have. 
because I refuse to get drawn into Hollywood. First of all, I'm not from Hollywood. I'm British. I moved over here. So I'm a fob, fresh off the boat. Like, I just have my own vibe. Like, I just don't go into those circles and think I have to be like everyone else. No, I'm carving the way. Like, I'm creating a new path. Nobody does what I do. I'm a very unique uh, person with my career so I stick to that and I move and I drive in that way and it's like I, I'm i running at a pace and I say to people if you can keep up you'll come with me otherwise yeah. you won't like that's okay I've lived so much of my life alone success is a lonely journey I've gotten to this place not through having a whole friendship crew around yeah. me I've gotten to this place through having people who are business minded and friends who become like business people like Natasha who produces my show she's like we do business together we're best friends like there's so many layers to it but my friends I do business with like that's how I see it because otherwise there's a hierarchy of first of all you got to get behind my son so I have to see my son first and then after my son I have my family and then or you know same same breath and then I have my actual friends who I've known for you know the longer times and now I have my business and then you so where do you want to fit in if you want to come in you want to go straight in at the top of business mm. You want to, you know, you want to do something with me that connects faster. Otherwise, you just, you know, you're lower down my my food chain. So I'm like, I, if you want to be my friend, let's let's do something amazing together. Let's help you with what you're doing, or let's do something incredible together. Like I love helping my friends. I love connecting people. People often call me, and be like, hey, I, my Facebook got shut down. Can you help me? I'm like, how do you know that I know the MD at Meta? <laughs> how do you know? Like they they seem to people seem to know that I know. A lot of people have a great little, you know, we call it a little black book. Uh, but, like, you know, I just believe in doing great things for people around you, but then limiting who's in your space, mm -hmm. exclusivity. Yeah. Yeah, and it's also like, oh, would you do this for me? Right. <laughs> would you do this right. for me? Right, that part. Yeah. Uh -huh. Would you do this for me is, especially in, in Hollywood, for sure. <laughs> Are you from Hollywood? Mm-mm. I'm Where from, are you from? I'm from, I, was, I grew up in St. Louis, well, I was born in St. Louis, and then I moved, like, in elementary school, moved to Texas, and then moved back and forth. But, yeah, I, when people ask me, I say Texas. <laughs> wow, yeah, I get the vibe of Texas. Like, your music and stuff is, like... So when you're writing, it's just inspired from whatever you're going through at that moment? And, yeah, or, and or what things I've seen. out of interest? Like, because I love country, but I always mm -hmm. wonder, like, you know... Okay, when we look at you, we might think, oh, maybe he'd be like an R&B singer. Yeah. But, like, you're really amazing at country. So, like, I just wondered, like, you know, how you chose that particular genre. Because I, I reckon you could sing a lot of genres. Yeah. Um, I, I think I probably could sing, like, R&B uh, or do some pop. But I think I grew up loving all genres of music. Mm -hmm. But I grew up in a hip-hop rap culture. And the things that I was seeing from my parents and from the neighborhood and stuff around me, I just didn't always want it to be, want it to be like, I didn't want that to be everything that was filling my brain. Yeah. I didn't want to hear, oh, I'm selling, I'm, I'm selling drugs to the, to the fiends and I'm thinking about my, my parents or I'm doing this or bitches and hoes and shit all the time. Like, I don't, I didn't want to feel that with my brain. So I started listening to pop. I started listening to rock. I started listening to country music. And country music talked about love and talked about the things that, like, you know, that mean so much in the moment, like just yes. <laughs> driving down driving down the street with the windows down or, yeah. like, being with friends and doing, like, you know, it's, this talks about more positive, positive stuff and stuff that wasn't so traumatizing to me. So I felt like I really connected with that. I always wanted love. I hear, you know, I'm talking about love. I'm like, oh, I wanted that. Like, and just, I don't know. It's just a little, I feel like it's the little things, the things that, that mean the most to you that you don't really, you know, that you don't really think about all the time. So, so I really was like, okay, like, I love country music. I listen to country music all the time. Even playing basketball in college, it was just like, if I'm in the gym working out, I'm blasting country music. <laughs> uh, see, that's like me. I love country music. Like, I listen to country music all the time. In fact, it's my son's favorite style of music. We listen to our favorite stuff, and it's just so fun and positive. And I've always got a country album playing in the house. Like, yeah, if I was going to do music, it would be country. Really? For sure, you yeah. You want to sing something real quick? <laughs> no. <laughs> no, my show. <laughs> 
<laughs> no, but I actually, I've already done music. I've already had a whole, like, I did a whole, uh, I was with Warner Music. I had a song out in the charts in the UK. Like, I've done some great stuff in music, but it was a genre that wasn't in my heart. Like, it mm -hmm. was just given to me, which was awesome, but not, like, it was, like, handed to me on a plate. Whereas if I was to redo music, it would be probably more, like, yeah, like, country pop. Like, it would just be... That's fire. That's super Yeah, fire. if I was to go down it again. And trust me when I say I have so many producers and people all the time wanting to me to go in the studio. But I'm like, I use my voice on stage. Like, mm -hmm. I use my voice in a way that I love. And I have this podcast and I have these shows. And, like, I love it, you know? So I just do what I do. And it just feels in alignment. Like, I wouldn't, I wouldn't want to change that, you know? Mm -hmm. Okay, so um, I like to play a game at the end, which is word association mm -hmm. okay so it's quite fun so just say whatever comes to your mind okay ready house love beautiful you can tell he's a country artist can't you <laughs> <laughs> i love that uh love you joy oh god peace mm. law of attraction Heart. Home. Home. Ooh. Safe. Family. Hmm. When I think of family. It's the first thing that comes to your mind. Hopeful. Millionaire. Someday. Money. Second. Love it. Okay, great. That's really cool. <laughs> I love to see where people's minds go. Yeah. Sometimes like the craziest stuff comes out. Yours is so wholesome. Oh my God, you're such a wholesome country singer. I love it. So I've already asked you what you say to your younger self, but let's talk to somebody out there who has also gone through a rough upbringing. They feel like they don't have the future that you do, but you want to tell them something. Um. It's, I feel like it's so cliche, but you can do whatever you put your mind to uh, and just love what you do and do what you love. So beautiful. Yeah. Amazing. Thank you so much for and coming And love today. yourself. I'm sorry. And love yourself. <laughs> wow. That's so beautiful. I feel like that's the, I feel like that's the, the, the biggest thing is to, to love yourself. And when you, when you love yourself, you'll take care of yourself mm -hmm. physically, mentally, emotionally. So. Spiritually, so beautiful. I'm gonna put all of Zay's handles below. You can follow him on Instagram. You can see his music. Go download his music and listen to it. You're gonna love it. Just driving along, listening to this voice is so beautiful. And no doubt, we're gonna watch him absolutely blow up and you'll be like, I knew him before everyone. And oh my God, he DMs me or like, <laughs> This is the best time, trust me, to get to know artists before they absolutely go colossal, which he is on that route. I know it. Thank I always you. spot stars. As you know, guys, I bring them on this show. Thank you so much for coming today. Thank you. I'm your host, Natasha Graziano. This is the Law of Attraction Secrets, and I'll see you again next week for more.